decided how you're going to work this one? Is it just 22 you're going to work, or are you going to work 26 and change them in half time? What's your format? Yeah, we'll, we'll go in with 26 um, as a number. Uh, we'll play 22. Uh, by AFL rules, I think you can play 22. Um, no more until you can rotate players in and out. So, yeah, we'll, we'll look to uh, bring some uh, players in at half time. Um, but it's a great opportunity for uh, some other players as well. So compared to last week, is there anyone that you're definitely putting in, like Jonas, Gray and etc.? Yeah, yeah, Jonas, Jonas and um, Gray in, um, Young Meaty, we'll get, uh, we'll get a half, um, or if not more, depending on how the game's going. Um, so yeah, yeah, they're the obvious ones. Anyone out? Um, at this stage, I think we, we, I think we had uh, Toddy Marshall um, and, uh, and Hamish Hartlett. Um, Probably the one, main ones, and there's Trent McKenzie as well, that um, just a bit of general soreness. You know, we could play him, but it's an opportunity to give other guys a bit of a run, and um, we're taking the cautious approach um, to make sure those guys are right for round one. On that point of round one, if <coughs> each one of the assistant coaches was set the challenge of picking the best 22, how hmm. different would each sheet be? Um, I don't think it'd be too much different. So um, clear yeah, we're, we're pretty clear on uh, what it looks like for us. Uh, you know, we've we've gone through this and uh, probably over the last month of what it looks like and um, I think we're in a healthy position with some of the young fellas that didn't get to play much footy last year and how they progress over the pre-season so in a healthy position and uh, but I think we're, we're very aligned as to uh, what it looks like for us in round one. So the starting point of finding that best 22 is it deeper this year than it was last year but how, how much deeper it is? Oh, going on, going on uh, what our pre-seasons look like, definitely the last four to six weeks, you'd have to say it does. Um, there's going to be, uh, with a full list, there's going to be some unlucky fellas um, or players that, you know, that through um, through the tightness of picking 22, uh, yeah, they might miss out. So how deep do you think it runs? Oh, it's hard to put... run for, for AFL selection? Yeah, well, it's, I don't want, to, don't want to put a number on it, but... You know, if we were to canvas sort of, you know, the 34 player markers to blokes that we think that can de definitely play at any given week um, straight away, I think we've got that sort of number. But you don't want to sort of canvas at any sort of shorter than that than the, what I've just said there. Just on Meaty, um, you got drafted as a father's son. You haven't seen much since. What can you, I guess, fans, what can you tell them about him and then yeah. how he goes about it? Yeah, well. He's strong at the contest like his dad, um, not as big as his, as Darren, um, plays around the midfield, um, very clean um, inside, um, yeah, he's very very contest orientated, um, uses both sides of his body, um, but yeah, look, he's, he's someone that was unfortunately missed a lot of footy last year and um, through COVID, but also um, through, had a hamstring injury that he had to battle with, so an unfortunate year for him, but I think it built resilience for him, but he's someone to uh, really look for um, in and around the contest is where his strengths are. Well, as I just said, like you know, through his um, how clean and, and uh, contest orientated he is, um, his vision and awareness in traffic um, stands out. But he's one that's had to over pre-season, like all our players, not just purely midfielders. They got to have a secondary position, and he's really worked on his uh, craft to be able to play forward, um, plays that sort of high forward role. Um, and that's why his fitness base was a real focus for him over the pre-season as well, and he's improved that. So now he's not just a purely inside mid, he can actually play half forward as well, which you is got, what we want. You've got to ask him that kind of same position as a father-son. I mean, how special is it for everyone in the club when you can give him a father-son um, a run out? Oh, look, it's a great opportunity for Jackson. Um, you know, we've got Trent as well, and obviously my young boy Taj. So, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity for the three young men um, that have come into the club. But, uh, yeah, for Jackson in the short term, it's a great opportunity for him uh, tomorrow um, to uh, get a taste of what AFL footy is like, considering he missed so much footy last year. Do you expect Rosie to play a full game or maybe half? Yeah, no, the plan is that he'll play full game. Um, you know, look, he's, he's training well and, you know, he's playing really well. So, yeah, we want to get as much time into him as we can. Um, soreness with Hammer, is it me or...? No, nah, he's just got general soreness, and like with with Hammer, like you said, he's had surgery to his knee over over the preseason, but it's got nothing to do with his knee. It's just general soreness. You're in a very strange position. You get to play the same team twice. They've mm. spent the week looking at what you did at centre mm. clearances. Mm. Does that appeal to you that all of a sudden you've got a team that spends a week and tests out what you're going to be like? It's a great opportunity for both sides to one um, see what they learnt about us, um, and us obviously to learn about them. But oh, we can expect you know, um, a fierce contest um, in and around the footy and it starts at centre bounce and yeah, look, it was on our terms, you'd say for most parts uh, last week, 
Um, but we're under no illusions. If we think we're going to walk out and it's going to be the same result from centre bounce, um, we'd be uh, walking into the eye of the storm, you know, in terms of um, what it might look like. So our guys are prepared for, for what the Crows will throw at us, and then it's obviously going to be something different. Um, and it's just going to be a heavily fought contest in there. With McKenzie, I'm, I'm seeing now, does that mean Ali comes straight in, straight in for him there? Well, well, Aaliyah was playing last week, but no, it's not so much a McKenzie out, Aaliyah in. Um, we played all of them, um, but yeah, it's just another opportunity for Aaliyah to build that connection and synergy with the other backmen, whereas Trent's obviously been a part of that over the last two years. What's it do for Todd Marshall to miss? Is that setting back a bit? No, I don't think so. He's had a, he's had a fantastic pre-season, Todd. Um, the one thing that's um, really stood out for Todd um, over the pre-season is his ability to win, you know, to take those contested marks um, in training against some good defensive players that we have on our list. Um, so for him, um, no, it, do, it doesn't set him back at all. Um, if anything, it just gets him right for, for round one. Conrad and Jonas, how are they travelling? I mean, it sounded like last week it was just kind of managing. Yep. They're going all right yeah, yeah, they've trained fully. Um, TJ, the way he plays, you know, he's our captain, he's important, we want to make sure he's right. So that was a manageable was a home and away game he would have played. Um, so we had the opportunity to rest him because we had the other players that could play. Um, and with, with Robbie, you know, he had the split lip. So it was like one of those things, well, he's a senior player. Um, he's done all the training. He trained fully. Um, he got some extra work into him. So get the stitches out and he's right to go. Just with Rosie, he's, he's ripped both pre-season games and mm. trial and scratch match last week. Mm. Yeah. Well, no, he he is going into the game. He's he's fully fit and he's out there, so um, he's not inhibited by by um, the the situation he's got with his foot. It's more how we manage it long term um, and how we manage him from week to week because it is one of those ones that's fluid. It, some days it feels great, some days it doesn't. But when he's out there playing, we don't put anything to risk with with Connor. When he's out there playing, he's fully fit, and that's why we've seen the results in the internal and last week. Do you have any idea of what the time frame would look like if he was to go under the knife um, yeah. after this week? No, that's not my place to say. <laughs> I'm not the professional doctor. So, um, no, I, I can't put a time frame on that, if he was. And, that, and that, that's yeah. that's still, you know, that's that's last resort stuff for us. Yeah. Willem Drew, um, what kind of game time will he, he have tomorrow? Um, oh, it all depends on um, how it looks throughout the game. But, you know, we're going to the game that he's going to play, you know, full minutes. Um, yeah, as like any of our midfielders, um, like I say, yeah, he'll 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 start. Um, but yeah, great opportunity for Drury. Yeah, you know, he's he's been troubled by injury over the last couple of years. It's great that he's got some continuity with pre-season training, and he started slow probably last week on, on his own admission. Um, but he worked into the game nicely. He's tough inside. He works hard both ways. Uh, so yeah, so he'll he'll get another crack at it, and um, hopefully, yeah, so touch wood, he's uh, he's going to fulfil and play the whole game. Joe, what do you know about 75 rotations? Yeah, well, we pride ourselves on our fitness base as a, as a team, um, and uh, we think we're pretty strong in that area. And look, it's going to challenge definitely uh, teams. It will challenge our players. Um, it, it, it probably just more challenges how how you play the game of football in itself and, and being smart. And it, but I think the the luxury that we'll see for spectators is that you're going to keep the best players out there for longer. Um, so I think it's going to be challenges for all, um, from all sides. Uh, but I think, uh, if anything, it's, you've just got to be probably smart with your game model um, and managing that. Did you watch the, uh, the first comments. two community series games? And yeah, if so, what did you take out? What did you see any major changes from the new rules that have been implemented? Well, I saw bits of uh, the St Kilda Carlton game and that was, that was fast placed in that first half and then sort of slowed up definitely in the second half. Um, last night saw snippets of uh, the Richmond game and yeah, you know, a bit of kick and catch, um, over, maybe a bit of over-possessing. Um, but look, it's the manning of the mark. You can definitely hear the uh, umpires given a bit more time on the stand. It's not just a, a quick call of stand straight away. I think there is a bit of a delayed um, call for the, the guy on the mark to stand. But you're definitely seeing the opportunities to um, um, work the ball in offence, uh, whether through by kick or by hand. So I think teams are adapting and like our game um, and like our players, they're so good at adapting to any rules that, um, and interpretations that get put in. Is that some kind of theme where <coughs> the player five metres off and he just keeps working the angles anyway appeal to you that maybe you don't send someone to the mark? Yeah, well, I think there's all, there's all variations um, that you can use. Um, I don't think there's any sort of hard and fast rule as to how to man the mark, but I think 
every team's going to be different, maybe in different parts of the ground or different timing game. Um, but I think if you've got the options and the players know the options that they have of how to man the mark, and I think all teams will be smart enough to work them, uh, then uh, any way of manning the mark is, uh, is a positive if you get the ball back off the opposition.